Hey squad, welcome back to Prepping with Sarge. Today we're gonna to talk about 15 things that all preppers should be keeping in your vehicles right now. And once more, if you're brand new to the channel, if you got anything of value out of this video today, please consider giving me a thumbs up at the end. Don't forget to subscribe if you like what you see, if you wanna see more of my content. And lastly, don't forget to check in the video description down below for some discount codes for products that I think you will like on your preparedness journey. Let's get right into this. So the first thing that I think you should be carrying in your vehicle at all times as a prepper is water. Now, what are you gonna do about storing water in the car? Because, you know, your vehicle uh, temperature conditions can get pretty extreme, yep. So the way that I found around that is I just get into the habit of rotating frequently. And I would like to add a caution to please don't put like those clear water bottles in your car. There's a very, very small chance that they can start a fire when the sun hits them in a certain way. It creates like a Fresnel, Fresnel lens effect where it can actually uh, create a very pinpoint light, pinpoint of light, very, very hot. And there has been incidents, very rare, but it does happen where sometimes people's cars can catch on fire. This is actually how a lot of forest fires start is that there's a little water bottle, somebody left, a hiker left out on the trail, sun hits it just right for, you know, 15 minutes and creates that little bit of pinpoint of heated light from like the Fresnel lens effect. Don't do that. Get yourself some stainless steel containers or if you're going to use water bottles like clear water bottles wrap them in some electrical tape whatever you can reuse them uh, and then that electrical tape is also a nice little hack to have a nice little piece of kit to have in your vehicle at all times just make sure you're rotating the, the water often number two is a solid first aid kit now i have a i have a discount code for rhino rescue first aid kits in the description down below which i believe are the best first aid kits for preppers uh, you want to make sure you've got some stuff in there, like a lot of gauze, a lot of medical tape, of course, band-aids, like that's the most common thing that I usually need because I play with knives a lot, uh, and throw in a tourniquet or two as well. Now, it may not be that you need these, but you might come, this has happened to me a couple of times where I've come across an accident and I am the first responder on the scene, even though I'm not truly a first responder, I'm the first responder on the scene. And while I'm calling 911, uh, I'm gonna render what aid I can until the true professionals get there. Make sure your first aid kit is accessible from the driver's side. Don't throw it in your trunk. It's not gonna do you any good if you get into a car accident and you're stuck, but you wanna try to do a little first aid until EMS can get to you. Make sure it's accessible and reachable from the driver's side. So for me, I've got some Velcro on the back of mine and I slap it to the floor base of the passenger side and I can absolutely reach it from the drivers. All right, number three is illumination. You need to have some kind of way to uh, see at nighttime if the car dies and you're stuck out on a dark road, right? So I recommend that you throw in some chem lights, some, you know, uh, those little chem sticks like glow sticks, whatever people call them. Throw some of those in your car, periodically rotate those as well. They do, especially the cheaper ones don't tend to last forever. And then it, throw a cheap flashlight in there. You don't necessarily have to have your best flashlight in there, but that way if the batteries do get corroded or something like that from the temperatures, you're not gonna be crying because your $50 or $100 flashlight got destroyed or ruined with that. Uh, throw a cheapo flashlight in there, it's better than nothing, and then try to get in the habit of a couple times a year rotating those batteries out. All right, number four, I want you to put a blanket in your car. All right, number four, I want you to put a blanket in your car. Raise your hand if you've ever had to spend the night in your car. A blanket is going to be a lot of comfort and if you live and drive in an area that's colder climate you're definitely going to want to have that uh, it's just it's a good thing to have in the car it also has some first aid applications and things like that if somebody's in shock you might need to get your blanket and put it on them number five jumper cables you definitely need to have jumper cables in your vehicle i don't know why more people don't have them i can't tell you how many times where i've been in like target or walmart and somebody in the parking lot hey can you give me a jump sure no problem where's your cables I don't got them. Okay, I got, I got your cables, don't worry, we'll take care of you. And if you don't know how to do it, it's really not that difficult. Believe me, I am not technically inclined. If I can do it, you can do it as well. Watch a YouTube video, you're gonna be all set. Get your jumper cables. It's the most common thing and easily can easily be remedied for when a car breaks down. Uh, sometimes the battery just needs a little bit of juice. And it is an indication, you know, unless you like, left your lights on or did something that caused that to happen, that your battery is probably dying. And so you're only gonna get so many jumps out of that before you need to replace the battery. So if that happens to you, just know like, okay, I'm gonna have to get a battery real soon, usually. All right, number six is a tire kit, right? So what are you gonna need in this? You're gonna wanna have some tire plugs, like a little patch kit. 
Uh, my wife carries an air compressor in her vehicle. I typically don't, but it's not a bad idea to have an air compressor in, in your vehicle so that you can inflate your tires without having to get to a gas station. Uh, you definitely need to have a tire iron and you need to check because if you bought your car within the last five years, sadly, a lot of new cars aren't coming with the tire iron and the spare included in that. So check through your car now, make sure you've got what you need. All right, moving right along, number seven, you need a cutting tool, right? It doesn't have to be a fixed blade like this, but make sure you have some type of cutting tool. And again, this is another item that needs to be within reach of the driver at all times. In case you need to cut yourself out of the seatbelt because it's gotten crushed or pinned and you, you need to self-extricate or you need to get your passengers out of there, or maybe you come across, like I said before, somebody else's accident and you need to cut them loose, always have some kind of cutting instrument in your vehicle. Number eight, a phone charger, uh, something that you can plug in to charge your phone off of your vehicle, right? I can't tell you how many people don't have one. I'm riding with people all the time and they're like, oh, my phone's dying. I'm like, so just plug it in. I don't have a charger. It, they're super cheap. Go out and get yourself the charger that works for your phone and have an extra one in the car at all times. Like I know you've got it at work. I know you've got it at home. Throw one in your car as well. They're not expensive. They're not, it's not so expensive that you can justify like I can't afford to get this, especially when it's your phone is like your number one safety thing. It's how you get help if you need it. So add a phone cord, a phone charging cord to your car. Make sure it works before you put it into, like if you don't use it a lot, that's fine. Maybe you throw it in the glove box or whatever, or the console box, but make sure you test it first before you put it away. Cause they do sometimes, I've gotten some ones that were faulty as well. All right, number nine, I want you to get a high vis kit. What do I mean by this? Reflective triangles and also some reflective vests. You know, those like fluorescent vests that you see the highway workers work wear. Uh, just throw a couple in your car. If you ever are uh, stranded on the side of the road and you have to work on your car, or you're waiting for somebody to come and help you work on your car or, or a tow, uh, believe it or not, like when you're driving, especially at high speeds, certain colors blend in with the road, like greens and grays blend in with the road really, really well. So you want to be able to make sure that other drivers can see you or see your vehicle. Like if you've got a silver vehicle, that's going to blend in with the road really, really well. And you want to have people see something in advance so that they're not at the last second, like when it's too late to brake or swerve. They're, they're right on top of you. So get yourself a high vis kit that includes some reflective triangles and maybe some road flares if you want to have those as well. And definitely some high vis fluorescent vests. All right, number 10, we're moving right along. Number 10 is cat litter. Get yourself a big, big uh, tub of cat litter. This is for traction. If your car happens to get stuck on a little bit of mud or ice, uh, pour that cat litter around your tires and sometimes it's enough to just give you that little bit of traction to get you out of there. Number 11 is tools. You want to have at least a multi-tool and uh, you know a screwdriver and uh, a Phillips head screwdriver and a flathead screwdriver and maybe an adjustable wrench and maybe some pliers. Uh, that would be the minimum that I would say that you want to have in, in your toolkit for your car. Uh, even if you don't know how to do the repairs, you might come across a good Samaritan who does, and, they, and this has happened to me. I'm not super technically inclined, but a couple times where I had an issue with my car, I happened to come across this person who uh, just happened to be in the right place at the right time, and they helped me get my car back on the road and back home until I could get to a mechanic. Number 12 is a fire extinguisher, just a small one. Go get, get go to like your local auto parts, auto parts store and ask for a car fire extinguisher. Uh, this is this is also again fairly common problem where carts the cars the electrical system can get overheated uh, or sometimes the engine gets overheated and being able to put that fire out quickly can make the difference between small amount of damage or catastrophic total damage where your car is just basically not going to be able to be repaired. So uh, well worth it to spend a little bit of money, get yourself a fire extinguisher. Keep an eye on that one too though because every couple of years you're going to have to replace that. All right, number 13 is maps. I want you to get a road atlas map for the United States if you live in the United States or whatever country you live in. Uh, that's got all the major highways on there, right? So you want to have that. And then I want you to have some local maps for your area and the closest city to you, wherever you live, whatever the closest city. And I want you to have some state maps, right? So have all three of those. You want a road atlas for your country. You want a state map and you want some local maps. Now, if you're like me and you like to go and hit the trails, then maybe you get some, uh, some like wilderness topographical maps as well. Um, and, you know, as you're getting out to do your little trail day hikes and things like that, that I like to do, grab it, throw it in your pack. 
You might not need it, but if you did, you're gonna be glad that you had it. And if you don't know how to read a map, take some classes, at least watch some videos on YouTube. It's really not that complicated. People tend to get intimidated by that, but you really don't need to. Uh, reading a map is, is something you can probably learn in one class. Number 14, we're in the home stretch. We're almost there. Stay with me here just a little bit longer. Number 14, I want you to have num numerous different types of tape. I want you to have some Gorilla tape and I want you to have some electrical tape, okay? Now, both of those have different purposes and they can also be used for some first aid situations. They might be able to repair something in, your, in one of your hoses has got a little leak or something like that, just enough to get you safely home and then you can make your arrangements to have a mechanic look at your car. Uh, it's not really a fix. It's more like you're jury rigging it to get you safely back home. All right, last one, number 15, is self-defense. Now, I don't get into a lot of this a lot on my channel. You're going to have to make the decision for you and based on your state laws, what you feel comfortable with. Maybe you just want to have a good fixed blade knife uh, for your self-defense. Maybe you're comfortable with pepper spray. My personal feeling is don't leave pepper spray in the car. It's, again, it's very, very rare, but if you live in an extremely... Uh, hot environment then it is there are some rare cases I know because somebody's gonna comment down below I've been keep I live in Texas and I've been keeping my pepper spray in my car for 15 years I know I get it but there are rare cases where it has exploded with the heat and you are gonna have a really bad time if you go to open up your door and a can of pepper spray has exploded in your car just make that part of your everyday carry instead of leaving that one in your car if you're into uh, handguns and firearms things like that again check your local your local laws and I always recommend that if you're gonna do that make sure you're taking some training as well but whatever makes sense for you for your self-defense then uh, incorporate that because we are living in a world where crazy things are happening protests and civil unrest can break out at any moment and people are sometimes caught in those by the crowd and if people are whipped up into that group think frenzy then they have been known to drag people out of their cars and beat them to death so it can be a life and death situation where you're afraid for imminent danger for your personal safety and you're going to have to make whatever decision you want to make for your self-defense considering your own you know laws and what you feel comfortable with okay self-defense that's all i'm going to say about that all right, folks, now it's your turn. Let me know down below in the comments. What did I forget? What did I leave off? What do you have in your kit that maybe I should be adding to my kit? I hope you had a good time with this. Again, if you got anything of value out of this, please consider giving me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And don't forget to check in the description down below for some product links that I think you'll, you'll find helpful and some discount codes for products that I think you'll like and that will help you on your preparedness journey. Keep planting your seeds. Keep stacking your silver. This is Prepping with Sarge. Yeah.